powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. Janelle is off this week. The new mayor-elect of Laurel finds himself between a rock and a hard spot, forced to choose between being mayor or his day job. That's right, the city of Laurel will begin the search for a new mayor if the current mayor-elect decides to quit his day job. Not to quit his day job, rather. Dave Wagner, who won the election in November, currently works for the city of Laurel as a water treatment operator. But due to the city's charter laws, a city employee cannot also be the town's mayor. That's because it's a position that has full authority over hiring and firing. Wagner was told in a meeting with the city today that it will ask the council to place an advertisement for an interim mayor. Now, if Wagner chooses to decline the mayor's position, that interim mayor would serve for the next two years. Wagner says the meeting helped settle tensions on both sides. Now he says he is leaning toward declining the position he was elected to just last month. I don't want to cause problems for the city. You know, any legal thing, any money like that, I want it to run smoothly. So if they need a mayor on January 2nd, they will have one. I just wish that this could have been ironed out before four months afterwards, and I'm elected, and I can't get a straight answer. And now they finally sat down. We're really decent. I appreciated it. I, I just thought it was really a nice discussion that we had. It was, you know, it was very good, and they understood me, and I understood what they are saying. Wagner says he'll likely uh, give, his, uh, give his decision to the city by next week and says he does appreciate all the support he's got from the community. By the way, the salary for the position of Laurel Mayor is $10,000 a year. Well, tomorrow voters will decide the fate of Elder Grove School, the school asking voters for a nearly $15 million bond to expand. Five years ago, when an initial smaller bond was passed for the school, the district had hoped the school could accommodate about 470 students in both elementary and the middle school. This year, enrollment at Elder Grove is well over 600, and there simply isn't more room to grow in the current space. The bond will allow the school to convert the current middle school into additional elementary space, and they would then build a new middle school on a different piece of land nearby. The cost of the owner of a $1,000 home with the bond would be $194 a year. So far, we're told about 55% of the ballots have been returned. County Elections Administrator Brett Rutherford says that's a good turnout, especially for a school election. Voters have until 8 p.m. tomorrow to return their ballots to the Yellowstone County Courthouse for them to be counted. Turning our attention now to the weather scene, it might be December, but that doesn't <laughs> diminish the fire danger of all things. Chief Forecaster Bob McGuire here with more on that for us, Bob. Well, we saw all that happening in California. Absolutely. Now it might be our turn. Here, let me show you what's happening. We have, starting tomorrow at noon and going into Tuesday evening, an elevated fire weather risk for basically grass areas. Uh, what's happening is the rapid fire could spread in the grasses tomorrow because we have had such dry conditions since December 2nd and 3rd. We had, um, had no precipitation. Then it's been very windy. Tomorrow, we're expecting near record high temperatures in the buildings. The record's 57. We're going to 55. Five, and winds are going to be gusting 50, maybe up to 60 miles per hour. Should a fire get going, it'll cause all sorts of problems. And not only here, but also across, across the high line. We're looking at high wind watches there for winds gusting to 80 miles per hour. We'll have more on your forecast, though. It looks like it's going to be warm for about another day, and then we start to cool down. We'll talk about that in a few more minutes. Jay? All right. Thank you, Bob. Well, the state's campaign, top campaign law enforcer, ruled that the Montana Democratic Party violated some of the key reporting requirements in last year's election. Commissioner of Political Practices Jeff Mangan said the party's report did not identify the candidates it supported with some $300,000 of independent expenditures. And Mangan says that is a violation of state law. He also said the party failed to disclose that it would be spending money to support Supreme Court candidate Dirk Sandifer. In 2016, the party's independent expenditures supported both Governor Steve Bullock as well as Santa Fe, as, and also some Democratic legislative candidates. Now, the political consultant who filed the complaint that led to the ruling says it's ironic that a party often that touts openness in campaigns doesn't follow the rules. The rules are very clear, and they say in black and white, you know, when you're going to make independent expenditures to support or oppose the candidate, these are the reporting requirements that are involved, and these are the things you have to report. So that the people of Montana know <clears throat> who you're supporting and where their support's coming from and all those things. And they did not do that. 
Jake Eaton often consults for Republican candidates. Montana Democratic Party officials say the commissioner's electronic reporting system did not accept some of their filings or who the party supported and that they have now updated that information. Mangan, for his part, says he'll likely negotiate a fine with the party, which said it will work with the commissioner to resolve the issue. Mangan dismissed part of Eaton's complaint, by the way, that had alleged illegal coordination between the Democratic Party and Supreme, uh, Supreme Court candidate Dirk Sandifer. If you're planning on purchasing an FWP special hunt license, you're too late. Those licenses sold out this morning in just a matter of hours. FWP's Bob Gibson says the 1,200 licenses that went on sale at 5 this morning were all gone by 8. The special hunt begins Friday, December 15th. The hunt begins, uh, hunters that are involved are, will be required to bring their deer to FWP for sampling. The hunters will be given serial numbers. Those numbers are then connected to a database where hunters can keep tabs on the results of the sample they provided to the agency. Bob Gibson says until a sample has been cleared of chronic wasting disease, the meat of the deer should not be consumed or given to pets. Anyone with questions or concerns, well, there is a public meeting coming up on Thursday of this week at 7 p.m. at the Joliet Community Center. The landscapes of Montana will appear on the big screen next year as two films shot in the Big Sky State have been selected for the Sundance Film Festival. That annual event founded by Robert Redford back in 1978 is a prestigious film festival held in Park City, Utah. It features independent productions. The movie Wildlife is based on a 1990 novel set in Great Falls. It stars Jake Gyllenhaal and Kerry Mulligan. It's about a boy who watches his parents' relationship fall apart after they move to Montana. And the second movie, called Dark Money, is a documentary about the influence of anonymous campaign contributions on American elections. According to that documentary's website, the film analyzes how Montana can show Washington, D.C. how to address the growing influence of outside campaign funds. Last year, a pair of Montana twins directed the flick Walking Out, which also appeared at the Sundance in the drama category. This year's festival begins January 18th. And speaking of movies, tickets to see Star Wars, The Last Jedi, are flying out of box offices faster than maybe you can say lightsaber. Both theaters here in Billings will show the film, which is set to debut Thursday. AMC Shiloh offering a special opening night fan event that starts at 6. And uh, tickets come with a reserve seat and a Star Wars poster. For all the other showings, it is suggested to buy your tickets in advance. This is the last Star Wars installment to feature the late Carrie Fisher, who passed away last December. Good news for a disabled Missoula veteran who had $30,000 worth of customized equipment stolen from him. But after the theft garnered statewide attention, it now appears the thieves had a change of heart. MTN's Donald Lakatua has more tonight. When former paratrooper Colonel Tim Gardapi's trailer containing all of his handicap equipment was stolen Thursday, December 7th, he had little hope of ever seeing it again. So when he received a call from the sheriff's office Sunday morning, he was skeptical. I was excited, but uh, of course I'm a little bit cautious because there's a lots of white trailers. But uh, when he opened it up and uh, on the phone the deputies opened up the uh, contents of the trailer and revealed everything was okay. And everything was still there and locked down, and there was no damage. Uh, mostly, uh, most of the items that uh, were critical to me are still there and uh, still in good condition, so I was quite happy with that. Sheriff deputies found the trailer abandoned in the Evero Hill area and returned it to Colonel Gardapi as quickly as they could. It was uh, quite a bit of effort, uh, quite a bit of sharing, and a lot of people uh, had their eyes out all over the state. and. Uh, you know, all over uh, the nation. Uh, a lot of them are ready for a good old Montana horse whipping. Well, this guy, because uh, they did not like uh, what they did to, uh, you know, Montana wounded warrior. Colonel Gardapi would like to thank the Facebook users, the hunters, and the veterans for their outpouring of support, and the sheriff's office for finally locating this trailer. Reporting in Missoula, I'm Donal Wakatua for MTN News. Now, aside from having to replace the lock and hitch on the trailer, all of the colonel's gear was untouched. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, we're going to take you back in time to the mountains and a deadly, dangerous rescue. That's coming up for you in tonight's Q2 Rewind. And later in sports, Billing Sr. goes back to back. The Gatorade Football Player of the Year is another Bronc. We'll hear from him coming up.
You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.